Hello guys and welcome back again to another chocolate bonbon tutorial where I just talk you through casually and spontaneously on the first take about how to make whatever chocolate bonbons I'm making and today it's dark chocolate gin. Now what I've done here first is I've heated up my green cocoa butter in the microwave gently and I've poured it into my cavity and now I'm going to give it a little finger swoosh because that's the design we're going for today. We're going to go for a green finger swoosh and then we're going to go for a white to back that up so you can actually see the green against the dark chocolate which is what we're doing now we've done the same thing with the white chocolate we've heated it up gently in the microwave in bursts and then we're going to swoosh it back again and swirl it round so you get the old um you know you could actually see it because when colors are against dark chocolate you can't actually see it unless you back it up so now we take our dark chocolate and you use however much you need for your mold and I've heated three quarters of it to 40 degrees Celsius. And now I'm going to add the rest of the one quarter and stir it all in until it's melted and below 34 degrees. And that is what you call seeding method of tempering. And that's probably the easiest way to do it in a small batch like I'm doing here. So I would recommend doing that if you're doing this at home. And I've gone for a piping bag here because it was just less messy and I wasn't fussed about the mess. But you don't need that. You could just tip the bowl in there and fill the shells up yourself but we're filling the shells up here with our tempered chocolate you know and if i could hurry up and finish it it's going to be great because i'm waiting to say something else and now we're going to tap out all the air bubbles and make sure all the chocolate is coated around every single side of the mold because that's what we need to make them brilliant beautiful shells and we're tapping out all these air bubbles so we get a nice smooth surface and none of the filling leaks out and now we're going to tap it all out and get all that chocolate rain. Get all the chocolate rain out. I mean, look at that. That is just hashtag food porn if you've ever seen it. You tap it all out to make those amazing thin shells. And once the rain starts getting a bit short like it is now, you know, the long tendrils have stopped. Then you're going to stop tapping and you're going to check to see if you like it. And then just scrape it away. Now, these shells are going to be a bit thicker than normal because that's what, you know, the client asked for, but that's what we're going to do. And now we're going to take our melted chocolate and add our gin to it. And the ratio we used is a 3 to 1 ratio of chocolate to gin for this. You don't need any cream in this canache because the gin is just acting as a liquid. And as you can see, there's still a lot of gin in there, so this is going to pack a punch. But once you've done that and added 10% of the weight in invert sugar, you'll end up with a silky ganache like that. Now, if you've tempered your chocolate correctly and chilled it correctly, your shells should come out easily and look like that, and they're nice and shiny and beautiful. And now we're going to add our ganache in. Now, piping the ganache takes a lot of practice to get right. You will underfill it, you will overfill it. I recommend cutting a small hole and going really slow, so that if you do, you know, it's, very, it's much harder to overfill it then. And we're just going to go just below the bottom just to leave enough gap for the chocolate and then we're going to re-temper some more using the same method again this time a bit of a smaller batch because we don't need as much to put the caps on and now we're going to use our heat gun or in this case a hair dryer you can use anything that blows out heat just to melt the shells and this you know helps to create a better seal between the shells and the caps so there's no cracks and no holes and the ganache doesn't leak out and get all sticky and stuff and ruin your shelf life even though the shelf life of these is infinite anyway because it's just chocolate and alcohol. And we're going to tap out the air bubbles again so we don't get those air bubbles. And then once we're going to go, we're going to give it one firm, nice, neat scrape, like so. There we go. And then we're just going to scrape off the excess chocolate and clean the mould. Now, once it's been in the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes, you should just be able to tap it down on there. And they won't all come out first time. This isn't the Instagram videos. Okay, they don't always come out first time. And there you have it. You have these beautiful, shiny bonbons. 